The Catalan police will join Spain's center of intelligence against terrorism and organized crime within a month. Hello, and welcome to Catalan News. The issue of independence is still haunting the relationship between Madrid and Barcelona. Nonetheless, both governments are managing to engage in dialogue on other urgent topics, such as security. Today they reached an important agreement on counterterrorism. Stay with us to know more about it and also to learn about a young activist who escaped Spanish police and has now reappeared in Brussels. No Catalan president has ever spoken in the Spanish Congress since the restoration of democracy. Will Kim Torra be the first? There is an offer for him to do it. The Spanish speaker said all ideas can be debated in the chamber within the law. While Torra makes up his mind, today marked the first anniversary of a debate and vote in the Catalan parliament that proved very controversial. Fussing and squabbling between pro-independence and unionist MPs, grueling legal discussions in and out of the chamber, immense pressure on the speaker, countless interruptions of the session, and the result, a referendum law passed, and the logistics for the October 1st independence vote up and running. Today marks a year since one of the most atypical sessions of all time took place in Parliament, and that meant the beginning of rising tensions between Catalonia and Spain last autumn. That day, the Unionist parties left the chamber just before a vote on the referendum law and the transition law, which set out the first steps to be taken after a potential yes vote. And today, Ciutadans and the Socialists organized two events to remember that plenary session. I és veritat que van passar coses molt gruixudes. Aquell dia es van trencar moltes coses. Es va trencar el Parlament, visiblement, a més. Però és que es va fragmentar el país. The jailed pro-independence leaders Oriol Junqueras and Raúl Rumeva wrote a letter in support of the then Parliament Speaker, Karma Forcadell, who's also behind bars for allowing that and other plenary sessions. Meanwhile, the Catalan president is still considering whether to accept the offer to explain his plans before the Spanish Congress. But his government rejects the chamber voting on his pro-independence project, as the result is certain to be overwhelmingly against. So they want more details on the invitation before accepting or declining. El que estic dient és que no podem dir que no d'entrada, però que volem saber-ne els detalls. The Speaker, the People's Party's Anna Pastor, hasn't rejected the idea of not holding a vote, although her party leader did rule it out. The Spanish government is in favour of Torres speaking in Madrid, but as long as his stance is agreed beforehand with the Catalan Chamber. While agreements on a referendum are still very unlikely, today in Barcelona the Catalan and Spanish governments managed to work together on security. Both governments agree that the Catalan police, the Mossos de Squadra, must join Spain's Center of Intelligence Against Terrorism and Organized Crime within a month. Conversations for them to directly access Europol databases are still open. Intel is crucial in the fight against terrorism, as became clear after last year's attack in Barcelona. Although Catalan police were praised for their handling of the attacks, concerns were raised over their lack of direct access to databases. I en els propers 30 dies eh, estarem dins, serem un membre de ple dret i a més, a més tindrem un espai físic a dins del CITCO. Seven pro-independence leaders are in exile in Belgium, Switzerland and Scotland. A musician is also fighting extraditions from Brussels. But they're not the only ones. He took part in a number of protests in favour of Catalan independence and against the imprisonment of politicians, some of these including blocking of motorways in the country. 25 years of age, CDR activist Adrián Carrasco is wanted by the Spanish police for the alleged crimes of terrorism, sedition and rebellion. Dozens of officers tried to arrest him in April but could not find him. He disappeared. They found his colleague Tamara instead. She was arrested and sent to the National Court in Madrid, later freed on bail under the condition that she cannot leave her local town. Her arrest and his exile prompted supporters to take to the streets in force, insisting that they are normal citizens exercising their right to protest. Some unionist parties, however, celebrated, stating that the CDR is a violent group. And now Adria has appeared in Brussels. He's the last exile wanted by the Spanish judiciary to let his whereabouts be known. 
All those being prosecuted in the independence case are being used to make an example of, to silence protest, he said today from the Belgian capital. Per atemorir la resta de la població, per intentar aturar, en aquest cas, l'independentisme, per intentar buidar els carrers, per intentar eh, injectar la por al cervell de la gent i que aquests eh, pensin que si es mobilitzen, si, si es manifesten en contra del règim, els hi passarà el mateix que ens ha passat a nosaltres. Now he has the same lawyers defending him as the other exiles seeking refuge in Belgium. There are currently seven Catalan politicians living abroad in exile, including the former president, Carlos Puigdemont, as well as the rapper Valtonic, the latter sentenced to three and a half years in Spain over some lyrics. If you were in Barcelona last night, you probably did not get much sleep, as the Catalan capital saw one of its worst storms in years. Major avenues such as this one, Paralel, were flooded and seemed literally like rivers, affecting the metro stations where trains had to be suspended. Thunder and lightning were so intense that many took to social media to ironically sound the alarm for the end of the world. Some buildings were flooded on the ground floor, including the Filmoteca and the Maritime Museum, and the fire brigade had to attend to 180 incidences, including fallen trees and problems with electrical installations. Moving on, today, NBA basketball player Pau Gasol launched his book in Barcelona. The basketball idol, originally from Catalonia, explains in the book how he came to play in the best league in the world and admits that what helped him reach the top is what can help anyone else achieve their full potential. In fact, he aims with the book to inspire and help others. Llavors això és una mica el l'objectiu del llibre, que és intentar ajudar, transmetre coneixement, compartir eh, amb aquest eh, amb aquest desig una miqueta de de retornar, no, tot el que has après, tot tot el que tu saps a la societat. And moving on to culture, tomorrow it's the last day to see a photo exhibit about Picasso in Barcelona. The show portrays an intimate Picasso seen through the lenses of Edward Quinn and André Villiers. The famous painter in his studio, working on ceramics, or painting, or with his last lover. A great opportunity for the fans of this great artist to learn more about him. And with this, we finish our show. Today is the inauguration of one of the main performing arts fairs in the world, and it's held here in Catalonia, Fira Tarraga. Don't miss it, and check out some of the performances from last year to get a taste of what to see. All together. All together.